All right, so I uh, ordered a Slayer Exciter from Slayer himself uh, the other day. It came in the mail today, which was pretty sweet. And um, just kind of wanted to show it off a little bit. But uh, that's the box that came in. It's the uh, certificate of authenticity, which is basically just saying, hey, look, you know, the guy that pioneered the Slayer Exciter circuits and the reason why they're called that is the guy that just made and sold this to you. So while there are tons of different um, circuits out there that people are showing off that they call exciters or Tesla coils or Slayer exciters, if they're wired like this, um, then most likely somewhere down the line they came from uh, Slayer's work aka uh, G Bluer on YouTube um, so having said that um, in my opinion it would be one of the most uh, one of the first people rather that I would assume knows what he's doing and he certainly does but um, this core right, core right here, it's what I like about it is it's not quite as large as I had imagined. Um, but it functions like a large Tesla coil. So like that guy over there, I want to say this works a little better um, from less wattage. And the coil... It's very fine wire. The wire gauge is much thinner than what I'm used to normally winding. So like the big guy over there and like some of those guys, a few of those guys over there. Um, most of them have thicker gauge wire. With the exception of a few small ones who have very hair thin wire a little bit smaller than this but this is very well wound um wow excuse me uh yeah i got too close and my phone shut off which i want to say that's pretty awesome um I thought my phone ran out of uh, storage space and it was just I was getting too close to the tower but this is a, running off a 1.2 volt battery right now and um, it's kind of wrapped around to the tube on the other side at the moment but um, it actually is lighting up this fluorescent a little bit it's kind of hard to see but that's pretty cool to see from uh, such a small battery um, but anyway aside from the perfect coil it's got a pretty nice little setup here it's all mounted on a nice little enclosure got a nice heat sink um, so you can run it up to about 20 volts if you wanted to um, anything you know 12 12 and under heat sink it's not really necessary um, but uh, it comes with this little 12 volt adapter that you can just plug right in and um, it's also got <clears throat> this extra plug so you can use an um, alternate power source which is pretty cool so so I'm using this double A right here and also came with a couple extra transistors and this cool little um, AV plug so as you can see it's picking up that field pretty well and that's pretty much what 
these guys are for. So essentially a field detector, if you're not familiar with them. LED across a couple switching diodes. But this is basically just showing me the wireless field coming off this guy from around a volt. That's pretty, that's pretty good right there. That's pretty amazing. But what I uh, really wanted to show, which now that I think about it, this is probably going to be uh, pretty difficult uh, holding this camera, but I really wanted to show 12 volts. Now, let me show this a little better. Got your little indicator LED showing you the circuit is on. That's oscillating. Nice little jack there. Jack plug. Transistor heat sink. And we already know what's inside there. It's not a secret. Uh, you know, he tells you what components are necessary to build it and shows you the circuit diagram right there show that real quick so I take this uh, plug that it came with plug that in So not only is there wicked plasma, that is that is pretty impressive plasma. Well, let's not get too close there. It's amazing how little cameras do plasma justice. But anywho, my uh, computer speakers across the room, I'm getting a slight hum as a result of this. But the field clearly, the field is the field is crazy. Like and this right, this guy right here, which is pretty hard to light, in my opinion. It's so old, it's hard to get a lot of illumination out of it gets uh, brighter than I've ever gotten it off this guy that is pretty freaking cool to me But yeah, um, transistor, I, I, I ran this before making this video, I ran it for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes just to see how uh, hot that transistor would get. And as soon as I unplugged it, it was just warm to the touch, it wasn't hot. Um, so this thing is probably not touching half an amp. <clears throat> you know, so I would, I would imagine it's 5 watts at its peak if that from this from 12 volts so yeah I can only imagine pushing this at 20 volts I mean that that would be insane um, and the plasma that I'm getting out of here I would say it's definitely a little more impressive than what I get from my big tower over there And the phone went down again because it got too close. But anywho, I don't know if you can hear that. Pretty awesome plasma. Very nice, neat looking setup. And this right here, by the way, I mean this is just this is just your basic setup. Um, it can get way better than this. And um, Slayer's shown how to do it. He's he um, 
has other kits for sale. This guy right here was uh, under 50 bucks. You know, so if you really do the math on that and compare his coils to um, other ones that you might find out there for sale on the internet, I mean, it's not even, it's really not even a comparison because I mean, what you get for what you pay here, I mean, it's just, I, I don't even know why. I would imagine the only reason anybody would um, buy one of these other knockoffs is just because they weren't aware that they could actually buy this. So, or any any of the other uh, different setups he has. But if you're not, if you're not aware, you know, there's other other things you can do. Different uh, size coils, adding secondary towers even a third tower um, there's different ways you can boost your output get longer transmission etc but this right here is just <clears throat> me personally I just wanted to have one that was as well made worked as good and looked as cool just to have in my workspace because the, the ones I have you know uh, they work all right not as good as this guy though so put a link to uh, this particular one in the comments or in the description rather but yeah I just wanted to show that off That's, that is pretty cool right there so thanks to uh, Slayer uh, everybody else who were so adamantly interested in these things such as myself but yeah very nice look at that look at that look at that arc that I'm pulling off of that that is ridiculous very st yeah very stable by the way I, I like that um, very stable circuit setup it might kick out of um, your good range every now and then um, but it'll kick right back in um, it, it's not the kind of circuit where for example it just Kind of did it there for a second. Took a very small amount of time. I would imagine for a capacitive build up and boom, there you go. A lot of circuits will just kind of die out. You got to go through a whole bunch of crazy nonsense to get it going. Very stable though. I like that from 1 to 20 volts. I haven't tried it at 20 volts. It's probably what I'm going to be doing here pretty soon. But yeah, so ran that for a little while this is I won't even say it's warm I mean it's hardly above room temperature I can tell there was current going through it but that's I mean it's yeah I mean that was practically nothing I, I can't really feel any warmth so highly recommended I'm glad I finally have one genuine so to speak and um Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.